G'day guys, Dave Rossio here from uh, Street Fighter Australia. Today we want to bring you a product that we've, uh, we've actually designed about oh, a good 10 years ago now. It's been out for about 8 or 10 years and that's our Street Fighter Airbox for the FG to FGX Falcons. Um, we designed this uh, way back uh, with the inspiration from the Coyote uh, Falcon, the FPV Coyote V8. Uh, and we designed it to suit the, uh, the naturally aspirated six-cylinder FGs, uh, the turbo six-cylinder FGs, and the old 5.4 V8 FGs. So they uh, are inspired from the uh, Miami engine FG 5-litre, but uh, don't actually fit that, that vehicle. They fit all the other models, FG to FGX. And they're designed to bring in cool, dense air through the front of the uh, grill, uh, through the, over the top of the headlight in a, in a mass amount to the engine. So what I want to do today is just show how simply and easily the, the fit is for one of these. And uh, what we will do, we'll do a before run on this uh, vehicle today. Uh, we've brought in a, uh, a standard uh, FG. It's a four litre standard FG, uh, naturally aspirated. So this is not a turbo engine. You can see it's got the standard air box, standard air filter. Uh, again, quite a good system. It takes air from over the top of the, um, the uh, grill and over, under, just under the bonnet through that snout there, brings it to the air box. Reasonable system, but again, unfortunately, uh, factories are restricted by all the bends and so forth that uh, we in the aftermarket uh, can, can improve on. So we're gonna do a before run on the dyno and see what sort of rear wheel kilowatt uh, that uh, that shows up. Then beyond that, I'll show you how quick and easy it is to fit the uh, Street Fighter airbox, and then we'll do an after run, and then we'll see what sort of uh, power increase difference in. So that'll be a, a, a direct apples for apples run. When we designed the uh, this Street Fighter airbox, uh, we designed it to cover and enclose the air filter, so not to expose it. The reason we've done that is in some states it may, may not be legal to expose the air filter. Even though uh, it is done on uh, uh, standard vehicles, as an aftermarket product we thought people may just want to enclose their air filter. So we've designed a full cover that still takes air through these grills and mass air through the front of uh, this big housing here. We've also, beyond that, gone to our fully open race cover style. So we've, re we've uh, replaced the full cover with a race cover, which exposes three quarters of that air filter. Again, to receive air from over the headlight area and down through the snout area. That just takes a bit more of a gulp of air. Uh, probably makes an, a, a bit more of a, a note, uh, internal uh, acceleration note, which sounds fantastic. Now we call that the sports cover or race cover version. We're gonna try both and see what the differences are between the two as well. Okay, so we've done our uh, base power runs. What we're gonna do now is replace the uh, standard air box. Now, I just wanna show you how quick and easy it is for uh, most people to do at home. Just need a few basic tools. Uh, what I've got is a flathead screwdriver, uh, one Phillips head screwdriver. We've got a, uh, a socket here, which is an eight mil socket. And we've got a, what is this, a seven mil socket, and just a small ratchet. So, a couple of screwdrivers, couple of sockets and a ratchet. So uh, we'll just quickly show you how to remove it. It's very straightforward. Uh, we basically uh, remove the standard air box from the vehicle and fit the, uh, the new air box uh, as it comes out. Plastic clip. Front 
snare. Okay, so. We'll remove the standard ducting from the uh, airbox lid, just back it off, don't have to remove the clamp all the way. And we can just pull that back a little bit. Now that's pretty loose. So you can leave that loose and once we undo the main bolts that'll come out. Now, so there's only two bolts uh, holding the main housing here. Now we just remove the ducting from the main housing. And you can see that comes out as a full air box, filter included. Put that to the side. Okay, so there you have it. We've got the exposed area now. So first off, we're gonna fit our full cover air box uh, and let's try that one. So I'll just place that there for a minute. What we do need to do is remove the uh, two rubber grommets from the standard air box and fit them to our Street Fighter air box. I'll do that. Grommets just fit in nicely, straight into a Street Fighter air box. Nice. All right, so we've got the two bolt spaces, they come in from underneath, again, directly removed from our standard air box. That's it, so we're ready to fit. Now these two, uh, you'll see these two lugs under here, they'll be, they'll be accommodated by the two standard holes on the chassis. And you might have to just manoeuvre your intake ducting while you're putting your um, box in. Just a little bit of fiddling around there. The little hole on the Street Fighter airbox accommodates your aircon fitting there, so that should come through nicely. We line up our bolts. Now, you may or may not have to just move your aircon hose just slightly to, towards your engine. It's just slightly touching on there. It's just a little bit of a pull. And there we go. That's as much as it takes. Okay, so there you have it. Without any bolts in there yet. Uh, the Street Fighter airbox is sitting in there nicely. Loosely put in your two uh, mounting bolts. There's one there. We won't quite do them up fully as yet, we'll just loosely bottom them, get them to the bottom. Still loose. We want to put our front uh, grommet in there at the moment. So while everything's still reasonably loose, These can be a little bit fiddly. Okay, so just hold that in place. There we have it.
Make sure the bol uh, bolts all the way down. Okay. And last thing is just tighten the clamp on our ducting back to our seven mil socket. So there you have it. That's all fitted in nice and firmly as per factory fit actually. It, it, it really is a magnificent fit. Probably fits better than the standard airbox. Um, what we've got here is a, a rubber seal that once you close the bonnet actually is made to seal on the bonnet lid. So that acts as a full tunnel that is enclosed from any hot air under the bonnet. So you can imagine once you, once you shut the, the bonnet this seal closes all this area in and you've got this massive front area here taking air from the grill up through the vent through this massive tunnel also taking air from directly over the headlight straight through these slits that we've put in here on our full cover uh, version into a direct gulp straight into the air filter straight into the engine now what we're going to do now, we're going to give this uh, the three power runs. We do three power runs uh, to stabilise and give us a, an average of uh, uh, what sort of power we're getting at the wheels. So to get an accurate uh, measurement, we'll do another three power runs with our full cover version and then we'll do uh, our, uh, our race cover and see what the difference is there. Okay, so we're going to replace the uh, full cover airbox now with our sports cover airbox. Um, now, I have, as been pointed out to me by one of our technicians, that I have actually put this airbox in slightly incorrectly. Now, I did that on purpose, not really. <laughs> but uh, you'll see what I mean when I fit the, uh, the sports cover box in. The little tab here should just be under this trimming. I, uh, in my haste, I uh, put it on the top of the trimming. So that's a little tidbit for you guys. Okay, so we've removed the uh, full cover box. Now we're gonna put in our race version. Back to our little grommet area, just so you remember, underneath the trimming before you go on. Just as easy, just remember it goes underneath. Uh, the boys told me off, so uh, I made sure we did it right this time. Okay, so here's our Dynograph screen. Uh, we're going we're gonna to go through uh, both, uh, all three airboxes, sorry, uh, individually. Now, remember we, we did three stabilizing runs on each test. So we do three runs to get an average of uh, each test that we do. So we started on uh, run number three. We did a couple of quick warm-up runs for the car so it got uh, to temperature. And then we started our testing 
on the standard airbox on a uh, number three run. So let's bring that one up. So number three run. Okay, so on the standard airbox, we achieved 148 rear wheel kilowatt. We did that three times on the standard airbox. So let's have a look at the averages. 004, Oop, back one, 004. Okay, that uh, just free heat in itself uh, achieved you know, another few kilowatts. You can see why we do some stabilization runs and shift zero five, and it's stabilized. There, you can see it at around 153.9. The last two runs, the second and third runs on the standard air box at 154 kilowatt, we can call that. From then, so we'll, we'll just leave that last one, which was the highest. Which one was that? Five. Let's get rid of that. Three. Four. Okay, there you go. That's your standard airbox. Then we did uh, three runs with the full cover airbox. So we started from six. Okay, so immediately from 154 to 162.8. Someone worked that out for me, that's six, two, that's eight, almost nine kilowatt increase, just from fitting the full cover Street Fighter airbox. Once again, remember we do three runs for stabilization. Yep, that one backed off a little bit. Where are we up to, number eight? Okay, let's call it 160. First run, possible anomaly, let's call it 160, 161. So we'll leave the uh, the average, I think this one here is the average, 008. We'll leave that one on, get rid of the other two. Okay, so brown, standard airbox. Blue, Street Fighter, full cover airbox. About an eight to nine kilowatt increase. That's no tune, airbox only. Now for the last uh, test we did was the race cover airbox. So let's uh, let's bring up the three, and that started off from zero uh, zero nine. Okay, higher. Ten. Or again. Eleven. Or again. Okay, so we've got uh, we've got. 0.10 is about the average there, so we'll leave that one up. Get rid of nine. Okay, a little bit hard to see in that light blue color. I hope you can all see it. Here's our results. Brown standard airbox that 153, dark blue Street Fighter full cover airbox about 160, 161, about an eight nine kilowatt increase, and then the race cover airbox. As we said, didn't expect too much on the dyno, but still gave us a good kilowatt to two kilowatt increase. So that's a pretty comprehensive test, and you, I think what you you need to look at is the standard airbox versus both Street Fighter airboxes, where there is a power increase of about eight, nine kilowatts all the way up the power run. Now we advertise these as a seven, a five to seven kilowatt increase. And that's being pretty conservative. So you can see in a real life test on this particular vehicle, we achieved a, a nine kilowatt increase. So there you have it. This customer has opted to go for the full cover airbox on his vehicle. Uh, he's going to be absolutely delighted with this, with both the extra power from a simple airbox upgrade to the intake note. The quality of uh, plastic, this is OEM style of finish and uh, manufacture. The pricing, I think it's, uh, it's right there to be able to be affordable for the bang for buck that you get. This Street Fighter airbox is made for your FG to FGX, for your naturally aspirated four cylinder, your six cylinder turbo where we expect eight to 12 kilowatt increase and for your uh, 5.4 litre V8 where we, again we expect 
they're 8 to 12 kilowatt hours. Available direct online from uh, our KPM Motorsport uh, online store or from any Street Fighter uh, workshop Australia wide. Just look us up www.streetfighter.net.au. Thanks again, guys.